Welcome to Speakers Bank Podcast. And my name is Mary again, a member of the podcast team from JTI working for the Speakers Bank. And for today's episode, we have a special guest. And she's going to tell us all about her story about traveling. At this lockdown, please welcome our special guest, Gita. Welcome to Speakers Bank Podcast, Seniors Edition. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. How are you doing, Gita? Nice to see Not you. too bad, thank you. Managing the lockdown. Yes. And now that we are like sharing your story, your story mm-hmm. will be at least, will give everyone, the listeners and the viewers, inspiration mm-hmm. from your sharing from your point of view about traveling not all of us has the privilege or luxury to travel please uh, tell us your passion for traveling Gita. um i'll just elaborate i started traveling for work mostly initially mm-hmm. um, so i was traveling quite often overseas to different parts of the world mm-hmm. and also i have family back in india so that's how the travel bug got to me and um yeah, so I travel at least three or four times a year, wow. except for the pandemic. For three of my holidays this year, I had two cruises planned, um, a trip to see my mother. It's all been now postponed to who knows when. And um, yeah, so it's going to be a bit hard, but that's okay. We take this in our stride. Yeah, so wow. what did you want to know about my travel? That's interesting, Gira, because... You travel three times a year, and you also experience travel by cruise. Yes. And you also travel, go back to, I mean, travel to India to visit your beloved family there. That's interesting. Does any specific season you usually go to India or travel? Well, in the last seven years my mom's 91 so you can imagine I've had to go not so much for joy or pleasure yes it's nice to see her but she's had a few falls she hasn't been well so but it's lovely going and staying with them so I go and stay for about three to four months when I go and see my mom and my sister but the holidays I just find I love it (laughs) I get to meet new people you know and um, this is an example I play bridge online as in bridge the game, card game. And I meet a lot of people from around the world. And it was really nice that on my travels, I could actually meet some of them face to face. So it's a lovely thing to put a name to a face whom you only don't see on the computer when you're playing. So it's really nice. So that's what I enjoy part of my travel. Wow. So when you travel, you meet a lot of people, different culture, I mean, cultural background, different people, and different atmosphere. Yes. And that's what I enjoy the most. I think travel broadens your horizon. I find people are scared because of the flight. They, oh, it's too long a distance to travel. But yeah. you can make the flight plan easy. You know, you really have to learn to take it in your stride. Learn to accept that you're going to on, a, for an, on an adventure. And it doesn't matter that the flight's going to take 20 hours for example at the end of the day when you land there you're going to see you know new places new meet new people try and understand other people's cultures enjoy the food and do all the touristy things you have to do or if you want to catch up with family it's just lovely to bond with them so you know people get scared of the long flights or the long you know uh, uh, layovers at airports but you can keep it. I keep myself amused watching people go by, making up stories about why they might be on the at the airport. So you have it's all has to come from within you. That's more important. So when you travel, you travel alone, and you have this uh, amusement of looking at it in the airport, just <laughs> looking at the different people's traveling. Yeah, and also to be honest, now thanks to modern technology all the airports have Wi-Fi. So, you know, if you're waiting for three or four hours at an airport, you can, I play word games on my phone. So that keeps, you know, allows the time to go past and it's, it's easy. It's not difficult. It's, 
like I said, a lot of people have a mental block about traveling or have this thing that, oh, it's boring to travel long distances. It's what you make of it. Like a cruise is different. A cruise ship is different. Um, it's very relaxed, very leisurely. Once you're on board the ship, you unpack and then nothing for you know so many days. But on a plane, you still have to be um, prepared for that long journey. And more importantly, I just want to add, you really must learn to travel light. You shouldn't carry a lot of stuff um, as hand luggage. People forget that because sometimes at airports, take for example, Singapore airport or Kuala Lumpur airport, Hong Kong airport, or even American airport, yes. you've got to walk distances. And if you have a lot of luggage in your hand, it's a very difficult task. So it's better to carry just a small backpack with you know, a few basics. And one pair of extra clothes, just in case your baggage goes missing. Oh, wow. Thanks for that tip. I was about to ask you that, you know, how do you handle when you travel a lot? So you, you travel light? I travel very light. So mm -hmm. I take one medium-sized suitcase. And as an example, I did six weeks in um, Europe in 2017. We went to see the Northern Lights in Norway. But we did a small cruise trip from Amsterdam to Budapest. So again, I had to have fairly nice clothes to wear on the cruise because people dress up. But when you're actually just traveling on holidays, you can have jeans and you know a few t-shirts. But we were going in winter, so I had to take layers of clothes. But I still managed because you have to remember when you're traveling, you're on holidays. People, you, you, meet, you don't meet the same people every day. So as long as you don't smell bad. You can wear the same <laughs> jumper two days in a row, except in the photographs, people think you don't have any other clothes, but that's okay. You know, but that's how I travel life. Yeah.